Test, test, test. Even though we meet every two weeks in the employee involvement meeting, we still have differences in that, but we talk about it, and uh, nobody really gets all excited about it. Uh, we know when we leave that room, if we've got a contractual thing we got to talk about, we can talk about that too later on. But I think the common respect that each side is showing for the other is really what's made it what it is today, and I can tell you. For the last three years that we've had employee involvement, have been the best years I've ever worked for the Ford Motor Company. That means that's sincere. But now you you represent a management of the negotiating table. Yes, sir. And is there someone here who represented? Yeah, you did. Well, I 
Well, I did for several years. I was on the bargaining committee. Right now, my position is the union employee involvement facilitator. And uh, I'm work with Chuck Hitchborn at the other end of the table. He's the salary coordinator. And uh, we did have some problems there. When I was on the bargaining committee, I was very skeptical of the new process coming in and being. And uh, as it turned out, now I resigned my union positions and took this job because I do believe it, and I believe it can work. And I believe it has worked here. We've got proof in the pudding with a new shift being put on. We're very proud of that fact. Uh, ironically, you know, when you have 4,500 people in the plant, everyone don't agree with the process, but we're winning them over slow but sure, and it's, it's, it's coming around, and it has worked. The communication is a lot better, and we're very pleased with it. Well, I have to tell you that, you know, that time when I was president of my own union and even when I went in the intervening years when I was on the board, I was always a member of the negotiating team and as president was always in charge. So I sat across a table like this from management in the picture business for the better part of 20 years. And uh, I know what you mean and I know uh, what it was like and about the differences and all. And uh, yet at the same time, sure, you've got differences and sure, when you finally arrive at settlements and a lot of things. It isn't everything that uh, you asked for, and it isn't everything that they offered, but it's someplace fairly in between. And a guy named Bulware in General Electric once said that uh, uh, labor asked for the moon and management offered green cheese and <laughs> said it's someplace halfway between in there, and he always suggested there ought to be a better way to, to do it. But uh, we've reawaken some, some memories of mine. Why Frank Freeman most of those years was the head of Paramount and he was also the chairman of the management group. And every once in a while, Frank would uh, excuse himself to go to the men's room and he'd do it in such a way that I'd kind of think maybe I ought to go to the men's room. <laughs> I'd go in and there, he'd be waiting for me. <laughs> he said, listen, let me tell you our problem and, and what is it that you, <laughs> and uh, be surprised how many deals were made in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> you still <laughs> but I'll tell you something about it also. Well, I said, this is what you've accomplished here. You just, you really, this has awakened a memory of mine that there was a deal, not complicated. You wouldn't think that an actor's business would be complicated, but when you've got stunt men, and you've got people who only work for the day, and you've got contract players on salary, and you've got in freelance and everything, and you're representing all of these, and a lot of things, and they've developed a thing mainly in the part of some independent producers, not the real major studios. But there was a thing, a picture stopped shooting, and then you had to bring somebody back for an added scene. You didn't have to keep them on salary for that intervening period. You could just pay them for the day or two days that they came back for that scene. Well, some of these independent producers, the scripts were getting thinner and thinner. Now they would shoot and say, we've stopped total production. But then, geez, they'd have another script of all the added scenes that they felt they should have. So we decided that had to be closed. Well, we weren't really dealing with the people who were guilty. And, but they finally gave in, and we got the point. But in our own councils and caucuses sitting around as the weeks went on and negotiating the contract, we'd talk about this and whether hadn't we done something that maybe was going to make the picture less good than it could have been. Maybe make something so expensive that they wouldn't do it when there was a legitimate added scene needed. So the last day, when everything was settled and everybody shook hands, I had the privilege of saying, wait a minute. They all looked surprised and I said, 18B. Well, they said, what are you talking about? We gave you that weeks ago. And I said, I know, listen, hear me out. I said, we're giving it back. We've decided we don't have any right to interfere with what might be the quality of, of a picture. And it's still a problem for us, but we'll have to find something else to settle. We're giving it back. When we left the room, the heads of the studios, the major producers, were sitting at that table among themselves to see if they could not find an answer to the problem that they could impose on the other producers. And I thought, by golly, these are pretty good labor management relations. I know you've got some other things here that you can talk about here. Questions? I was on behalf of the local line. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased that you're here, Mr. President. Uh, I think that our plant is a uh, 
a prime example of what can be done with everyone working together. And I think that that is the big, the biggest issue that has come out of the EI, the employment and bonds program, is that everybody communicates. <coughs> Really, is an inspiration. You don't mind if I become kind of a missionary and talk to some other businesses and people like this, do you? We, we, <laughs> made <a survey. laughs> uh, we made a survey. How many people have been through here in the last couple of years? 37, 37. Major industries. And, and literally from uh, well, it's Chinese, we came through, from Japanese, uh, Fort Bureau. This has really been uh, quite a show place. It's, uh, I have a lifetime membership card in my union, and I think I'm the only guy that ever held that job that could say such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to start a union for presidents. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think so? any other comments? Questions? Mr. President, we've uh, called on Mr. Nolan to help, uh, help teach other uh, labor management groups in the state what, uh, what has been so successful uh, here at Clay Como because it's a, you, you go in there and you feel the, you feel the, the, the spirit and the enthusiasm and the, I think when you when you say they're going to be the best in the world, they, uh, the group out there believes it. And I don't. I still don't know what your secret is. And if anybody can tell us, we'd like to know. We're not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, letting people know what it is to taste winning and to really expect to be winners. And I think it's saying you're going to be a company or the country. And I know Mr. Paul was saying today, play more in our company. Support I think, for our company to get there and those present here definitely trying to do that for the country. But really, it's, it's making people feel like winners and, and getting spirit and pride back. That's really what's happening here. It's getting rid of an adversary relationship and realizing that you're partners. Now, as partners, you may have some differences of opinions on how it's the best way to go about it and do it, but you work it out. The idea of putting all the issues on the table, <coughs> putting all the problems on the table, whether they're difficult, whether they're unpleasant. It's the truth, and that's where we all start. We all start with the truth. I think that's the way you feel about it. I believe it is. I hope it is. You know, Jim, all of us comment on that. <coughs> I agree with you. I mean, it wasn't always so. No, there's there has been times that that speaking for the union, that it has been very hard to trust the management of Fort Mosier. I think in the last couple of three years that we have, we don't totally trust you, <laughs> and we probably never will. But I think that we have come to depend more on what you tell us than any other time that I've been here. I've been here 25 years. Well, you two started in your present jobs about the same time you told me earlier today. I think the president would be interested in hearing that. You became plan manager three years ago, Paul. Here is assistant plan manager for four months and was the plan manager and Jim was about the same time as elected union chairman. And that's when things are pretty tough here. And uh, neither side really get home with anybody. And uh, we just kind of got the other said, hey, we, 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 the competition, the quality problems we've got, the attitude of people has got to be a better way. So I guess both of us here, we're, we're the court of last resort and we can't get results, the two of us are going to sit down and try and resolve it. And really, for the last three years, we've pretty well done it. We've had some tough issues uh, that both of us have wrestled with. Uh, some of the D is lost, some of the I have lost. But I guess we're both far sighted enough to think about the people that I manage and he represents and uh, our commitment to them. When you get down to some real sticking points, go to the answer. President, um, I have been with the company going on 38 years, and uh, I've seen all kinds of trickery and other things happening within the company, you know. But, um, and when they started this employee involvement program, I was very skeptical. And so <coughs> our manager, Paul Nolan, selected me to be on the employee involvement uh, steering committee. And uh, once I was on it, and after a few weeks, it sold me. And I really am a firm believer in it, 100%. Mr. Brazil, it's a, it's a not really hard to understand how it works because Mr. Wallace, our assistant plant manager, one of our EI group meetings one day hit it right on the head. He said he learned EI, employee involvement, in the Sunday school class when he was 11 years old, and that's the golden rule. 
treat other people as you'd like them to treat you. And we found that the people in this plant who want to get involved in building a good quality product, if they just have someone they can talk to and discuss their problems with, and whoever that is, if they give them a direct answer and an honest answer back to their problem, whether it can be done or solved, whatever the case may be, they appreciate that and they feel that they've at least been communicated with. A lot of things that they ask for in trying to solve problems can't be done because of maybe economically it isn't sound. Uh, most of the things we get done or asked for can be accomplished. But mostly I think the people, the rank and file and the union and in the management where they started communicating and solving problems and where they got the answers back where we never got before prior to this is what's made the difference. And it's just a simple, simple statement to, to go over the rule process. So you shoot a straight stick with me and I'll shoot a straight stick with you. I think that's something we're going to do just speaking on behalf of the guys and the gals that are out there working on the, on the line. Out of all of this, can you honestly say, do the employees feel a real pride in what they're turning out? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you see, maybe you haven't got any idea how, what a forward step that is. When I was telling these gentlemen, I, when I was doing the GE theater and television over an eight-year period, I visited 139 GE plants and walked the assembly lines of everyone, meeting everybody that worked, quarter of a million employees. And I was struck at that time, because that was back in the, in the uh, 50s and the first couple of years of the 60s. I was struck by the signs in the plant and the billboards and the things, the PR effort to instill some pride or, or, or get the, in other words, signs that would say, your neighbor may buy this. But there was a kind of a, uh, a hostile <coughs> attitude in which somehow they thought maybe they were getting even with the boss if, if they didn't tighten something as much as it should have been tightened or not. But the effort for quality, and uh, this, if, if you've accomplished this, if the guy goes home and is damn proud and sees one on the street and uh, feels like saying to his kid, hey, that's one of the things I'm building, that's, I think that's a large part of the whole answer. And it's the answer to our competition with uh, with a foreign trade is to have that kind of <coughs> quantity that the, the American working man must know. There isn't any working man in the world that's superior to the American working man. Give him the tools to work with and he really wants to do the job. And then I won't have to fight with my own my son and daughter who try to tell me that Japanese cars are better. And I've been trying for a long time. Since I don't pay for them anymore, they do. <laughs> I haven't got any pressure on it. Mr. President, I think one of the things you saw today uh, in this plant, uh, you can see in, in the industry as a whole today. And it's that thing that's been established as a common goal. Success of the Ford Motor Company, success of the Clay Como plant. That's a common goal that I think the three facets the working man uh, labor and management has, and I think you can see that throughout the Ford Motor Company. Once you get the common goal, there's always a common goal, then you can build around it. And I think that's what you see here today, uh, is that pride is building on that common goal to be successful and make the Ford Motor Company and this industry successful. And uh, that's what you see here, and you see that throughout this industry today, I think. It's tradition of the company, going back to Henry, 80 years. 80 years this year, Henry astonished the industrial world with the salary that he volunteered. And uh, there'd never been anything like it uh, in, in industry in America at the time we did it. It was a period of time we lost a little bit of it, though. But right? it was a period of time that we lost that common oh, yes. goal. Yes. And I think that's what you see today that common goal is, is on its way back and it's growing daily. The employee involvement hasn't hurt anybody. It's helping people. Yeah. I can see guys. that. There are a lot of factories and I had an experience like this. I really haven't. Well, what makes you feel good, Mr. President, is when you walk down the street and see a truck or a car that has our sticker on it, Missouri Pride. Uh, you point it out to everyone that goes by. I know my, my children 
my wife, every time they see one, they tell their friends or neighbors, that's where that car comes from, where my husband or father worked. And we didn't used to have that. That's instilled a lot of pride. And, and pride in this in this plant, pride in the gentlemen and, and ladies on the line, our rank and file workers, they, they have a lot, big change in attitude. Uh, like I said, most of them. You still have people that it takes a little longer to bring around. But uh, most of them have a bigger pride in what they build. And that's why we're doing quality products. And my dollar one is today. So I can see in the future when we get our place back in day three. And because uh, uh, as a union member, I love to see Ford Motor Company make money because it gives us a good position at the bargaining table. And I like my things to buy. Father of Mr. Nolan, Samuel Gompers, parent of the whole movement. They're the founder of the AFL said the greatest sin that management can commit is not to make a profit. That's true. That's true. You should be some, you're not being just gentlemen. Some of you got some questions that you wish you could ask and you haven't. In the interest of time, I know they all are delighted to get a program. We've been in high science community and it's about time for support or session. It's very good. Someplace. I, uh, just for obvious reasons, I think we'd like to have you in the <laughs> 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 <laughs>